Good morning. Good morning. My name is Manuel Flores Pereira. I'm from Portugal. And I'm, I'm, I, this is an, an interesting combination of uh, collaborations. Uh, I'm going to talk about concentration, yes, but in linear, with linear concentrators. And I want to introduce mainly the Fresnel technology. We call it advanced Fresnel. You will understand why. Um, I hope you will follow me easily. Or would you like to start here? No? No, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. Where is the beginning of this? Simplify greatly simplify the system 
by circulating directly in the collectors, uh, in the concentrators, circulating the salts directly. And as we can see, this is a much, um, at least it looks a cleaner scheme, simpler scheme, and perhaps we are already going uh, in the right path toward, toward, towards lower cost. But to get to higher temperatures, we need higher concentrations. Why? Because thermal losses are proportional to the receiver aperture in comparison with the entrance aperture. So the higher the C, it means that the receiver is, is, is lowest in, in, in comparison with the aperture cost, and therefore we will, we will expect less thermal losses. And this, of course, has been already achieved and proposed with 3D technology. In fact, um, there are already plants on the market that circulate directly uh, molten salts from uh, two tank solutions to the top of the tower um, and then providing the, the production of steam, just like I showed before. But the question is, um, oh, and the, the typical example is this one, the 19 megawatt um, uh, nominal power capacity uh, system in Spain for the salt, uh, and in this case associated with 15 hours of storage, you see the two tanks there and the helium stands around. So we have talked about this before, I'm not going to talk about that. What I'm going to talk about is, missing here somehow, is the answer to the following question. Can we uh, do the same with the, the very high concentration uh, achieved here? Can we achieve higher concentration with linear concentrators? Now, the typical um, concentrator, in the, the parabolic trough, um, can be made bigger, or can it? So this is the, the, the typical size of these parabolic troughs, the ones that you saw before in Andersol, is about, and the opening is about six meters, and this is one with 7.8 meters uh, opening, so larger. Um, and, and so this is a, a step in the way of a, a, of a higher concentration. But, but so, so what? Okay, let's look at the optics a little bit. Take a parabola, uh, take a receiver, which is a tube. Um, this is 2D, therefore it's a circle. But, and then we have the um, incoming radiation making an angle to the aperture, plus or minus theta. And the smallest receiver possible, the smallest receiver possible, is the one that still captures the tangent ray here, the extreme tangent ray plus theta or minus theta. And if you do the math, it's very simple, you will find out that C, defined as aperture, divided by the perimeter of the tube, is 1 over sine theta times the sine of phi, so the, 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 the opening matters, divided by pi, so that's C. And what does it amount to? So let's take a tube, the typical a 70 millimeter tube on the market. Let's say, well, the sun we know uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a solid angle of 0 0.5. So let's say this plus or minus theta is 2, is 2.5 times the, uh, the, the width of the sun, the solid angle of the sun. And if you apply this formula with sine phi equals to 1, that's the largest it can be, uh, C amounts to 27. And that's the value for all or almost all of the parabolic trough fields on the market today. It's exactly this. Um, about six meters entrance aperture. They are designed typically for a theta of between two and three suns. And that's what it amounts to, a concentration of 27. And what about our um, ultimate trough, the very large trough that I showed before? Well, it has about eight meters, eight meters. But now you know from what I just said, now you know, if this is 8 meters now, theta must be small, smaller. And this means that now the uh, construction, the manufacturing of the trough must be much more precise. The positioning of the trough on the field must be much, much more precise. And so this is not necessarily cheaper. It's larger, goes in the right direction, more concentration, but it becomes much more difficult to do. 
So the question is, I have a real limitation here. And the question is, am I doing as well as I could? Am I using optics, really, uh, in my favor? The answer, of course, is no. This is conventional optics. This is just the same focus in optics. And what I'm about to show to you is that optics can take us much, much um, further in terms of uh, concentration. So I, I need to introduce uh, some concepts in optics in order to explain this to you. And the basic one is Etendue. In fact, we were talking about Etendue before in the lecture of uh, uh, Professor Blanco, um, but he didn't call it this way. But, uh, but that's what we were talking about in a sense. So what is Etendue? Imagine that we have a surface DA, and we have radiation going through DA, making an angle theta with DA. Yeah? So the, this dA is the intercept, the intercept uh, area, dA times cosine theta. Ah, the cosine theta. So that's the, the amount of energy is going to be proportional to dA cosine theta. But radiation at any point here can make, a, 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 will have some angular spread uh, with a certain solid angle d omega. So there is a product we call du, which is dA times cosine theta times d omega. And this is called etendue. In optics, we call this etondu. It's nothing uh, but that. So what is etondu? It's the product of the space available for solar rays, to, for rays to go through, and also uh, the, the angle uh, in which they can do so. That product is called etondu. Now, if we want a, an, an optics, remember we were saying we want high efficiency. So high efficiency means we don't want to lose any etondu. If we lose it on in our optics, we are losing efficiency. So let's see what this means. Imagine that we have three uh, torch lights, uh, three lamps, and they are shining light on, the, on an aperture AB. Uh, the etendu is the amount of, of the, this, this du uh, that we talked before leaving the lamps, going towards the box. Um, and notice that inside the box we have the space available, the entrance aperture AB and a certain characteristic angle, largest angle, alpha. Now, there is no question in your minds that if we now change this experiment a little bit, we put the, the, the same three lamps, so the same étendue at the start, going into a smaller aperture will be associated with a larger angle. Ah, but that's also what you would expect, because it's the product that must be conserved. Angle times entrance aperture is the same in both cases. But we now see that um, what people in optics work with, they work with these rays, these angles, these, en these uh, apertures, and if they want efficient optics, they must do like in here, they must conserve it. Only. Okay, so we have that. So now we can answer the most uh, fundamental problem um, for concentration, which is this. If radiation is incident on an entrance aperture, making an angle with it, plus or minus theta. Maximum concentration would mean uh, putting it on an aperture with the smallest size possible, B. And the question is, what's this maximum concentration? What is this ratio, A divided by B? And the answer is here. Ah, we know that we need to conserve it on due. So when we do the mathematics, we can uh, we know that etendue here must be the same as the etendue there for the most efficient optics, and then we get to a result which is C max is A divided by B equals to 1 over sine theta. That's the best you can do. If you were playing with towers or 3D optics, the result would be sine squared theta, 1 over sine squared theta. So concentration for a given theta cannot be larger than 1 over sine theta in 2D. And that comes from the very basic idea of conserving it only. Okay, so let's look at our parabola again. So our parabola, the concentration was C1 over sine theta times sine phi divided by pi divided by pi. Even when this is 1, a parabola is very far from the um, limit. C max for the same theta is 1 over sine theta, and the parabola is very far, a factor of pi, at least. So we can do much better than with parabolas. Ah. 
Good news. Now for long time people did. So this this optics here is called non uh, is called op uh, op imaging optics because parabolas bring the a point at infinity to a point of focus. So they image infinity to a focus. And these are so imaging systems, imaging optics. And to do what we need to do, we need non-imaging optics. Let, let's, let me just show you why non-imaging optics goes. No, okay. Here. Um, notice that I, I, the drawing here shows rays go in all directions at the exit when C, that is C max. And incoming, we had plus radiation coming between plus and minus theta. In a sense, the image um, properties of, of this uh, are associated with this angle. The smaller the angle, the better, uh, the, 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 the more precise, the, in terms of image, the entrance aperture would be. But there, rays are going in all directions. So anything about image, about preserving an image, is lost. And it's precisely because you give up imaging that you can get to this very high concentration. So let's move on. Um, now, uh, so parabolas are not doing the job. So how can we do the job? It would take another half an hour to explain what you do with, uh, to, to have non-imaging optics satisfying that limit. But let me say the following. The, the direct solutions to the problem, when theta is very small, and we are talking about very small thetas, will, uh, will give us optics that are very, very, very tall, so not practical at all. So if we want practical optics, we need to combine, ah, but on, on the contrary, focusing optics, these parabolas, lenses, um, I'm destroying this. Um, these, um, these are compact. I'm more compact. So what I need to do is to combine uh, focusing optics with what we call second stage concentrators, other concentrators that I'm going to associate with the imaging optics. So I need to work on concentration, but I can also work on the acceptance angle because the relation is C is one over sine theta. So to get to a high concentration, I can play uh, with the amount of concentration I need, but also play with the angle. Uh, and I need to mind the gap. What is this? This is a specific problem of uh, the specific problem of uh, tubes. So the mirrors of, the, of this second stage is going to be placed around the tube, and it cannot touch the tube because if it touches the tube, obviously it gets hot, and we lose energy through a, through a thermal short. So we need a gap between the tube and the concentrator. Uh, and th so we, uh, this, this has a consequence for the optics. So let's, let's look at these evacuated tubes. Um, we have the tube. We, we, we are going to place some second stage concentrator around it. Um, and we have several problems here. We want to avoid that rays go several times through the glass, like in here. We want to avoid, we, we want to have situations like this, straight straight go, uh, uh, path towards the receiver. And we don't want radiation being lost in the space between the receiver and the second stage. So these are limitations to the optics. I'm just introducing this because um, we can solve all of these problems with the optics that I'm going to show to you. So let's look at the parabola first. Um, this, this would be the mirror, the parabola, parabolic mirror here. And we are going to design a second stage here that we put around the tube, which will allow us to have a smaller tube for the same entrance aperture. So never mind the terminology. That SMS means simultaneous multiple surface uh, optimization. So we optimize the primary and the secondary uh, to get to a new shape, which would look like this. So here is our tube. We now have a second stage concentrated around our primary, like a parabola, and we have a much higher concentration. How much higher? Um, for the same conditions, look here. This is the parabolic trough. Concentration was 26. We had before with the sun, with the that, that, that acceptance angle, and we can design a parabola or with second stage 
for twice as much concentration. But since the tube is fixed, the tube is the same 70 millimeter tube, why is the tube fixed? That's what, that's what, uh, that's what is available on the market. We cannot just invent smaller tubes. We have 70 millimeter tubes. So, what happens? Now we have a much higher concentration, so we have a parabola with 11 meters. This is not the practical solution. Because 11, it, 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 already 8 meters, like that, that so-called ultimate trough, was large enough to move in the wind. Um, with 11 meters, we will have an impossible, an impossible monster. Optically, much better, yes. But practically, not. So if I want to play with parabolas and non-imaging optics, I need to use much smaller tubes, if they ever come on the market. They don't exist, so I cannot do anything with it. So what can I do? Is to change completely and, and go to another kind of optics. And that's Fresnel optics. What is Fresnel optics? Ah, so before that, so, so I need to um, go to, to new optics, yes? All the time I'm playing with this idea of conserving it or do. Uh, I want to enhance concentration, of course, um, and uh, I will have, uh, and, and that's for now. This slide is out of place, sorry. So what is Fresnel optics? Very quickly, uh, Mr. Fresnel, in the late uh, 18th century, early 19th century, and the idea for lighthouses, and the idea of uh, approximating a lens by small by prisms. Uh, the, the prisms reproduce the curvature of the lens. Why is this important? Because these very, very uh, um, powerful lenses sending beams very far away were very thick, very heavy, impossible to build on top of the house, the, the, the lighthouse, and with prisms they became practical. So, and they look like this. I don't care. So now let's look at the let's look at the um, 2D and we reflect. So let's say we would have a parabola would be a very very big parabola. We can approximate the, this 12 the 12 meter parabola, 20 meter parabola. Not practical, but we can approximate the parabola by flat mirrors like this. And now we have a Fresnel concept. And perhaps with this we can be we can do much larger concentrators. And in fact, I'm proposing structures with 20 meters. So the, 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 the parabolic trough with its with its tube, uh, I put it here so that you can see the comparison. We could have for the same tube with, with a second stage concentrator and the Fresnel concept, we could have larger than 20 meter concentrating concepts. Um, and, and, and concentrate much more. And in fact, by doing this, gaining more as, as uh, other aspects uh, of cost that I will show in the end. So, so now we have a receiver and we have flat mirrors on the ground reflecting to this receiver. And again, we can play the same game. Uh, and if, 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 if R is a flat, the maximum concentra uh, concentration that can be achieved is uh, 0.45, so uh, uh, a factor still very far from 1 over sine theta. Uh, and in fact, if this was a tube, it would be the same factor of 3, the same pi. So with Fresnel, we, we have the same problem. Besides, as we heard uh, Professor Blanco explain, we have other factors. We are not conserving étendue. Why? The étendue of the, the radiation coming from the sun uh, is now reflected and blocked by the next mirror. So blocking and shading, by the way, are etondu losses. Now we can call it the proper name, etondu losses, coming from shading and blocking. So etondu is not conserved uh, if we don't know what to do. So we need to do something else. But this means that we have here, if etondu is not conserved, we have to look for solutions that conserve etondu. So we have a large room for improvement here as well. And then another concept that also Professor Blanco uh, touched upon, which was introduced um, for, for um, uh, 2D geometries by David Mills in Australia years ago. Uh, he said, well, why have only one receiver? Uh, why can't we have two receivers? Or in fact, in towers, multiple receivers. So this concept is also interesting because suddenly we have an extra degree of freedom. If we have too much uh, blocking or shading here, we can send the radiation to the other side. 
So this, um, this uh, uh, concept of having multiple receivers uh, was an interesting addition by Mills. Um, so with this, he could improve it on the conservation, but he did not go to the highest possible concentration uh, in, his, in, in his proposals. Uh, so he, 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 was, he still was far from the limits, but introducing interesting, like a very interesting idea in fact. Uh, he was not using really second stage optics, and so he was not yet at the limits of high concentration. In the meantime, other people proposed second stage optics. Uh, this is a proposal by a company called Novatech. So they have a tube, they have the primary down there, um, and they have a second stage concentrator, concentrating radiation uh, with the second stage towards the tube. So they were using the possibility of second stage, but they were not doing it on new conservation. So they were also not in the limits. Um, so when we, we, me and my people, when we start thinking about this, we wanted to solve all of these problems. Uh, working with second stage conservation, um, and so trying to do multiple receivers, trying to match it on you all the way, um, approaching maximum concentration by using another, before we talked about SNS, now I'm introducing here another word, TERC, tech. Um, that's another way of handling the optics. Uh, don't bother with the details, I don't have time for that. But let's look at what we propose. So suddenly we have a, 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 on the ground the heliostat field, the heliostat field, the flat mirrors, and we have the, um, the receivers. But why should we not use the fact that we can place the, the, the mirrors a little bit higher from the, from the horizontal, and therefore, therefore reducing uh, um, blocking, actually? Yeah, so, these, so we have it on do, we, we call these curves it on do conserving curves. So curves where if you place the mirror there, we don't lose any at all, we towards the receivers. So that's one concept. It's not drawn to scale. But now we can have a mirror which either reflects this way or that way, depending on what's best. Um, and, and have no losses. So these heliostats now are on a hit on the curve. Um, a little bit more detail, we propose the first that we would have the receiver constituted by tubes. We were not thinking of evacuated tubes at the start. Uh, Non-evacuated tubes placed in a V, um, and then we would use this Turk um, and reflect radiation either this way or that way, and achieving very high levels of concentration. Let me show you. So our, one of our first proposals was something like this. Um, the tower would be at uh, the tower, or uh, yeah, the, the second stage would be at the seven meter. It would not be symmetric. It would be an asymmetric solution. Um, the temperature meant uh, to, to operate was 565 degrees Celsius. Concentration was now 66, much higher than the 26 from the parabolic troughs. Um, and we proposed uh, something like this to start with. The, the, this this uh, second stage was in a cavity, non-evacuated, uh, so we needed some insulation. Um, the, 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 uh, <coughs> this had to be protected by a, a glass cover. Um, we meant this glass cover to be done by straight, straight portions of flat mirror, uh, flat glass, and so forth. I'm not going to explain too much about that. That's the ray tracing of this. And then we they said, okay, but let's uh, use the non-evacuated non tubes because, uh, let's do the evacuated tube because on the market there are no uh, atmospheric or non-evacuated um, tubes that can be coated with a selective coating that will take these temperatures. There's a limit for the coatings on the market to about 420, maybe 450 but not enough, 560. So we could not have the proper non-evacuated receiver. And then we move on to vacuum. The, the evacuated tubes were available, they could operate at, at least at very high temperatures. So we designed the optics to match the tube. Uh, that's one possible way, this Turk and then a, a, a different um, 
curves here that will allow for no losses in the gap and perfect matching of the primary to the two. So I'm not going to explain this in too much detail. I don't have the time, I must finish soon. But then we said, okay, but uh, why not make it simpler? Remember, the parabola could be associated with a, with, through an SNS solution, could be associated with a tube directly like this. Now, this could have 20 meters, as I said before, very large, a concentration of 74. Again, designed by 3223 two, three sons, we can play with the concentration and with the width, the angular width. So it's even larger. It's, it's, it's good to have three sons rather than two and a half, because everything is like three sides. Everything uh, is, is easier to do. Uh, and in this case, we were not even using the etendue matching curve. We were not raising this. Uh, we were taking care about etendue conservation. The distance between these mirrors is not the same. But we were still having some, sh uh, some losses. It can be done a little bit better with mirrors raised. But that's not, not, not this, this proposition. Um, but then, the, the disadvantage, we also heard Professor Blanco talk about this in the tower. The price to pay, remember the Novatech solution, which was something like this, smaller second stage. We now have a perfect one, but it is much larger. Um, by being much larger, what does it do? Cast shadow. Um, and it's more difficult to, to produce. So it, it, it is indeed much larger, three times taller. So he said, okay, well, perhaps we don't want to go this way. Let's try something else. And, and this was a single receiver. Let's, we talked about uh, two receivers or multiple receiver concepts. So finally, we, we, we bring it all together in, in a final proposition, which is like this. We now have two tubes. We have two second stage concentrators. We put everything in the same tower, by the way. This is also the discussion that Professor Blanco was doing before with the towers. Remember that the, the, the heliostat fields move to the north, or moves to the west or east, gets larger or smaller. We can play to be the same way. Uh, right now we have two fields, one reflecting on one, one two towards one tube, and the other one reflecting on towards the other tube. We, 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 we propose this uh, for, for a European project. The detail is now 24 meters. So, uh, we are going in the, in the, the direction of very, very large things. And now this has a shape. This is called a CC. This is called an involute. That's a V group. All of this combined takes care of perfect matching with the primary, no losses. And, um, uh, and it, it, it seems to be a practical thing to, to build. Uh, why is it practical? Ah, um, let me show you. Well, the optical efficiency of such a field is 0.7. Um, and the concentration here, well, we designed this one for 45 uh, concentration. We do this with these three suns. And uh, this is to be a practical design. And now there's an also some very nice thing about this too. And the fact that we can have, if we, if we want a, a, a plant and collector field, let's say with lines that are 500 meters long, we can uh, go in, in, with one tube in one direction, come back with, with the other tube. The two tubes together uh, reduce the piping enormously and make it easier for the, uh, for the uh, engineering of this whole thing. Uh, one characteristic aspect of um, Fresnel fields is that they are much more compact than parabolic drop fields. And therefore, that's uh, another interesting point. Less land uh, for the same, less land, and in fact, much more compact than tower fields. So, less land for uh, the same power. Uh, also, this is very interesting. We want to propose the possibility of giving a slight tilt to the collector field in order to empty it. Because you see, if, if you're circulating, Molten salts. Uh, molten salts are very nice, but the, the, the disadvantage of molten salt is that at low temperature they become solids again. So, so you don't want to leave the molten salts inside these things uh, unless you spend some uh, unless you spend some energy to, to keep them warm. And one nice possibility would be to just empty the field, and, and that can, can be perhaps easily done with this kind of configuration. 
um, by just letting the salt drain down at night. So we want to test this as well when we build one. Um, and what do we expect to get? So here there are um, the, the calculation done for two places, the south of Portugal, it could be the same for the south of Spain, so the south of the Iberian Peninsula, perhaps the same here in, in Cyprus. And uh, a, a place in Egypt uh, with higher solar radiation, uh, higher DNI, but with a nice feature, smaller latitude. So like in towers, when you go down in latitude, all of uh, things get become more efficient and better. But what is interesting there is that we are getting um, an overall conversion efficiency from uh, solar radiation to electricity uh, around 15%, a little bit larger, uh, if you hear the latitude is lower. Why is this figure so important? Because this is 15% is the efficiency of the undersol projects that I showed before. And the typical efficiency of Fresnel systems proposed up to now, the Novatech uh, field, uh, the Novatech solution, I showed before, and the David Mills solutions, have efficiencies of 9%, 8 to 9%. So by going with these kinds of optics, we come closer to the, the efficiency of parabolic rocks, uh, and uh, much, much higher. And with the, 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 cost, the probability of low cost is here, because um, uh, radio tunnels can be produced uh, at a much uh, lower uh, price per cost per square meter. And we are thinking that if we, with these kinds of figures, in the Iberian Peninsula, if we build a plant like that, we would be, uh, oh, and by, by the way, wind storage, seven hours of storage, we would be around or below 8 cents. Um, Perhaps we are dying even lower because there is no scale of producing these things. In fact, um, this hasn't been done yet. This is why I wrote here to be demonstrated at the plant near you. We haven't done this. Uh, it's just the theory. Yeah? But the theory is good. It, 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 it brings it very much down in cost with a very simple, simple and, and, and cheap solution. So it's worth trying. But it hasn't been done. So don't take this figure as a something that we have achieved, we have we haven't done it. Uh, so we are hoping to get financing now to uh, do a plan like that and, and prove to you that it can be done this way. So in fact, in, uh, in my uh, uh, facilities in, um, in Evora, we, are, we have a, a, a molten salt loop, a large scale one, we are installing now a sort of ultimate trough uh, kind of uh, parabola, one that will have a very high concentration. It's not the ultimate trough, it's uh, a TSK Flaxol parabola, but instead of the typical 6 meters, it's a, it has roughly 7 meters. So it's in, in between the ultimate trough and, and the conventional. It's a very large trough. It will be uh, it, it's being extended now. Today it's already here, and we are about to connect it to the molten salt loop, and we can test, we will test this uh, uh, ideas of uh, operating with molten salt at high temperature very soon. Um, there is a consortium uh, led by ourselves and DLR, including a salt company, TSK Flaxol, engineering companies, um, and also being followed by South Africa um, uh, and that's called, uh, company. Um, so this will have 3.2 megawatt thermal uh, parabola connected with the, uh, the uh, salt loop. And but what, I'm, uh, what I want to do is to, we will install a Fresnel there, a Fresnel system there to demonstrate what I just explained. So that's the plan. We want to have Fresnel technology just side by side with parabolic trough technology on, on the exact same loop and demonstrate the efficiencies that uh, I was talking about. So that's that. So in conclusion, um, we think we we, are, we we fully believe that non-imaging optics with advanced LFRs are really a fair shot at uh, uh, low-cost dispatchable electricity. So high concentration enhances efficiency, lower thermal losses, as, as I explained. But has other advantages. Uh, and I will lose one minute more to show. If you have a high concentration, you reduce the number of rows. If you reduce the number of rows, you reduce the number of tubes. 
you reduce the amount of salt, the, the, uh, uh, you, you reduce parasitic power consumption, you reduce a number of things. Um, and also, a very nice feature of LFR, the receiver is fixed, it's on that tower, and doesn't move. Uh, and that facilitates enormously uh, the engineering of this thing. One of the, one of the problems associated with parabolic troughs is that at the end of the line you need flexible connections, flexible hosings. And that's a very uh, detail, uh, um, weak point, bring all sorts of problems and, and, and not with, with LFR. So, it's not, so, it's not just the fact that flat mirrors are cheap, uh, it's also that we reduced enormously a number of other things. And that was not in my 8 cent calculation. I don't know how to calculate that exactly, so I didn't. So there is a true potential of low cost here, and this is why I think it's worth... Uh, um, and besides, uh, we, we, we are just uh, proposing one configuration with all asymmetric uh, second stages, but we can do much more yet optimizing this uh, 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 question, using different uh, mirror widths, and other things that we don't know how the future will. So we can do optimizations in the future, just like uh, Professor Blanco is doing for towers, uh, trying other uh, config config configurations, mirror sizes, tires, uh, tower height, uh, receiver shapes, and so forth. This can be done for now, and we haven't done that. Uh, so I don't want to do this, this is another. Uh, the, 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 other, the other point is that we really, really think that storage, for storage, uh, thermal storage is going to be, or is cheap, and is going to be cheaper. And so that this is the way to go for, uh, for uh, using um, the CSP for electricity production. So that's another point. Uh, I, 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 last night I tried to get from other talks the slides that I showed to you and some were left that were not part of this talk. Sorry. Uh, so that's it. Um, please, any questions that you may have, I'd be happy to answer. Expand the the the, 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 ap the aperture, um, and in, uh, you, 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 if you want to, well, the radiation coming in from the sun has a certain solid angle. That's what we call theta sun, and that's the the, mi the minimum angle you can design an optics for. That's the exact width of the sun. In fact, people don't do that at all. People design for two or three suns. Why? because tracking the sun uh, has to be done with ac accuracy uh, and to track with high accuracy is very difficult and also because um, the, the, the mirrors, uh, the, the manufacturing of the mirrors themselves will introduce a larger, a larger spread so the angle, uh, the spread coming out of the parabolic mirror is going to be larger than the, the spread from the sun so if you, want, if you want to increase concentration, what I showed to you was that there is an inverse relation between concentration and angle. And so if you want to increase concentration, you automatically reduce the angle. Is that the angle constant for the sun? The half angle? The star, yes, and, the, minim, and the, the, the maximum concentration you can have, in fact, 1 over sine theta, for the, the solid angle of the sun is 213, if you do the math. Yeah, the, the 0.5 uh, degrees from the sun gives you 213. 
That's the very maximum you can have. But no one designs for 213, because you will need to be absolutely precise with everything for 213. So people design for three suns. And three suns gives you what? Those 26 for a parabola. <coughs> now, the ultimate trough and the TSK Flaxol uh, people wanted a larger parabola. What is the price? Their theta is now smaller. So they must track with higher accuracy, and they must manufacture their mirrors with higher accuracy. Otherwise, they will miss the sun, right? And they will also extend the diameter of the... Uh, no, they, can, they cannot extend the diameter of the receiver because the receiver on the market is 70 millimeters, period. And if they did extend, if they, if they used a larger theta, then the concentration would not increase. Concentration is the aperture divided by the perimeter. Uh, if you use an 80 millimeter tube or a 90 millimeter tube with a larger concentrator, you have the same concentration. You start with, you see? So, what is fixed with parabolas? The receiver. Because that's what, that's what exists on the market, a 70 millimeter tube sold by the kilometers. Yeah? So, you want higher concentration? There's only one thing you can do with, with focusing optics. Reduce data, reduce the angle, be more precise with the tracking. And that goes in the wrong direction in terms of cost. And in fact, I think the 8 meter, 7.8 meters in fact, the ultimate drop, is the very limit. You, you, you shouldn't go larger than that because it's already 2 theta, not 3, 2 theta. So it's a much smaller angle. And uh, it's not practical to move anything larger than 8 meters. It's, it's impossible. So with parabolas, you, 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 want, you, you can uh, use higher concentration, that's true, but then you need to put a smaller uh, receiver there to keep the angle large. So this is a reverse, reverse relation. Increase concentration, reduce angle. Uh, uh, if you, if you re increase the angle for the higher concentration, you have to reduce the receiver size. That's optics. You can't, you, you, you can't beat this. So this is why, with Fresnel, there is no limitation here, because ah, I just put more mirrors. More mirrors. Yeah. But there's still a problem. Yes, it's still constant. Yeah, the, 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 the receiver is constant. The receiver, uh, the part of the, the, the mirror is from the receiver. Yes, so I, I'm playing. That's right, so I'm playing with the angle. This is, I designed, but even so, I could design for concentrations like 70 if I wanted. With three theta, um, with, with, with three suns. So, conventional concentrators, focusing concentrators, are so far from the limit that I can play with, I, I can play with the optics. It's no longer focusing optics. It doesn't focus, any, it's not, doesn't focus anything. But I can play with the optics in order to get a much higher concentration and a larger angle, and a larger angle. That's very nice. I think we should. Uh, do you have any other questions? Uh, one last one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there are two values for concentration ratio. I found uh, some One is one over uh, sine theta for maximum. Uh, yes. And, one, uh, and the other one is one over pi sine theta. Do uh, you have any clue what's. Uh, one over pi? Yeah. No, no, no. no. Yeah, if you calculate, uh, no, it's, it's one over sine theta divided by pi yes. as well. It's a, it's, it's a multiplying factor. I mean, you don't have the lead, let's say, for the concentration limit. It's only two dimensional, it's one sine theta, and, uh, the, uh, and the uh, three dimensional is one sine square theta. The other way we are talking is about the concentration limit of a parabolic, uh, parabolic dish or a parabolic uh, drop. That, is, uh, that you have this additional factor with the uh, professor Koyali saying that this is... Yeah, so if you do the mathematics here, and, and what is the mathematics of... Oh, this one. Yeah, I cannot move there. That's the same thing. Yes, where was it? Yeah. Um, if you do the mathematics, how do you, how do, you do the mathematics? This is A is your is a given, yeah. R is a given, your tube. So this the, the, the tube determines the theta. That's the smallest 
one possible. It's the one that still collects this, this data, right? Tangent to the two. Okay. Now, if you calculate uh, this, uh, it comes to this. A divided by 2 pi r is equal to 1 over sine theta divided, uh, multiplied by the sine of phi. So the, 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 large, the highest concentration is the one that uh, has the phi equals 90. Yes. Divided by pi. Pi is, comes in. And pi comes in because it's there. So, um, so if I want to uh, increase concentration with a parabola, like the ultimate trough, I come here. But then theta must be smaller. And vice versa. Now, with non-imaging optic solutions, I can play with both at the same time and, 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 and do what I want. And, and why? I, mean, I show this uh, roughly here. Not very specifically, but roughly. Let's see. Here, with this solution, SMS, I can now play with this. This is not, this is not going to be a parallel anymore. It's a primary, <coughs> like a parabola, but not exactly. And this will reflect to the, to the second stage, to the wall here, and that in turn to this. And by playing with both, I can go to a higher concentration, keeping theta the same. So the, 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 before, the reflected radiation was going tangent to the tube. Now, it, it is tangent as, as well, but it's after reflection. So I can play with it, I can redirect it. So it, it wanted to go out and bring it in. Yeah? So that's, that's, why, uh, that's why it works. I think we need to finish, otherwise we're not going to have coffee. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, I wanted uh, to set a wall. You see that uh, at the end, uh, and you will see also tomorrow, at the end, uh, the thing about uh, having upper limits is help you to, to uh, identify what you have to do in, the, in your design. And you will see tomorrow that I am to towers and going back to the to the Fresnel. Most likely we are going to discover the Fresnel by going from yeah. one tower to multi towers and then perhaps to <laughs> to line them. Uh, yes, just just, just let me make it uh, in fact with 3D with the towers you can play the same I mean if this if what I say uh, for 2D is true, it's also true for towers. So in principle you could put a second stage concentrator on top of a tower. It is a much more difficult thing to do, and this is why people haven't done ever like this. But in the last solar basis, finally, there were some, some people proposing simple uh, mirror additions to the receivers on top. And, and, and what, that, what, this, uh, what this does to you is that uh, Professor Blanco talked about, so it's not, the, not just the difference between uh, focusing on, uh, by the way, uh, tower is a focusing optics uh, concept. It's not just the difference between focusing and non-focusing or non-imaging. It's this spillage thing. Uh, spillage will, uh, will, will make the radiation go like this, and the tower is here, on, and, and there, are, there is radiation missing. Exactly this, uh, we're talking there. So I, if I put a second stage concentrator there, I bring the radiation back onto the tower. And some people are pro uh, proposing this already with simple flat mirrors, especially at the bottom of the tower, uh, and making a smaller receiver and, and collecting uh, light from spillage. But so little by little, these concepts are also going into the tower concepts. And the other one is, of course, multi tower. Multi tower is a nice, a very nice uh, idea to, to, to play with. Because very, very large towers. Not, 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 not efficient enough. And smaller towers are much more efficient than you saw. So, so it does uh, also for the technology right now, a lot of things are defined by the habit, by the thing that you have. And in the case of the parabolic drop, what is uh, almost standardized, people are having maybe producing different tubes, but right now the, the standard tube is the one that it is, and this is the, the cheaper that you can get. And that limits also your options. In, my, in the case also of towers, uh, I was, uh, my thesis was about doing a secondary concentrator for a receiver because the receiver had to have a window for a volumetric receiver uh, designed by DLR and, uh, and the windows have only one diameter of wall, I think it was two meters diameter 
and you have to put the, uh, all the variation that you need for the resident to make the diameter, you have to go also to secondary. And in fact, people doing towers for another application, very, very high temperature, sorry, don't mind me. For very, very high temperatures, towers that will produce, for instance, solar fuels, or towers that we process materials at, uh, say, a thousand degrees Celsius or much more. So uh, uh, it's a different game. It's not at all the electricity producing game. These people use second stage uh, concentrators on their towers. So it's being used already because there the temperature is so high and losses are going to be so big yes. that you really want to reduce uh, the, the, the receiver size. And therefore these concepts are being used in towers but not for CSP concepts for other applications, very high temperature applications. And uh, so, so yes, I mean, proper optics has to be uh, really used at those high temperatures because otherwise you have a very bad performance. Thank you very much.